Hello YouTube, this is Marcus with another video. Today's video is going to be a hardware overview and benchmark comparison for the AMD A12 9800 APU. For those of you who do not know, that is the latest in the non-Ryzen line of APUs from AMD. It has four bulldozer cores clocked at 3.8 GHz and eight Radeon R7 GPU cores integrated into the same chip. Now the interesting thing about this chip is that even though it's bulldozer cores which are the same ones that were used in the older FX chips and like the A107890K uh, and things of that nature on the older FM2 Plus and AM3 Plus platforms, uh, the A129800 is actually an AM4 platform chip so it actually goes into the same motherboard socket as the new Ryzen CPUs which means it also has access to things like PCI Express version 3 DDR4 RAM, M.2 SSDs and all of that good stuff. It's just a much lower it's a lower end chip than say a Ryzen CPU and it has some integrated graphics so it might make a good workstation CPU or just a good placeholder for somebody who may want to upgrade to a Ryzen chip with dedicated graphics later on. So I bought this chip to serve as the primary workhorse for a build I'd just completed for my son. He actually had a Dell laptop sort of folded up and connected to his television in there already, but we've had all sorts of issues with the laptop. It's been back to warranty three or four times, and even a cheaply built custom desktop PC is going to be more powerful and more flexible than a Dell laptop from Walmart, the hardware issues aside. So I went ahead and chose the best APU I could get for him so that he can play Minecraft, Lego Batman 3, watch watch Netflix, uh, surf the PBS Kids website, and things of that nature. Now the first thing I noticed when unboxing this was that it did not come with the Wraith cooler like the 7890K did. It actually came with a smaller, sort of cheaper, generic looking CPU cooler and fan because it's actually only rated for 65 watts instead of 95 watts like the 7890K, which I find a little bit strange because it's running at 3.8 gigahertz with the same number of cores and everything. It's basically a slightly improved 7890K with a 300 megahertz down clock. So I'm not sure why they didn't include the Wraith cooler, although the, the factory cooler does keep it cool enough. Uh, but I would highly recommend that if you're going to do a build with this chip, the first thing you do is, one, make sure you've got at least one intake and one exhaust fan on the case besides the CPU fan. Uh, and the more fans, the better. And also, I highly recommend you go into the BIOS and set a custom fan curve. Uh, the, the default fan curve is set to ramp up to 100% at 80 degrees Celsius. And uh, so I went in and set a little bit of a steeper fan curve to ramp up the CPU fan to 100% at 70 degrees Celsius. And that sort of helped things out a little bit. So if you're going to do a build with this APU, I really recommend you take the time to examine your thermals and square that away before you start doing other things. Now on to the synthetic benchmarks. The first thing you should know is that this benchmark was ran on a fully up-to-date Windows 10 64-bit system. Uh, that was fully up to date as of the 11th of November 2017 with no third party software installed other than the benchmarking software itself and the necessary chipset drivers and things for the hardware in the system but there was no third party antivirus or nothing uh, that came that didn't come with Windows and I actually went through and turned off a lot of the privacy things and uninstalled a lot of the default app, little apps in the start menu and things of that nature so that it was as clean of a base system as I could get so there should be very little running in the background to detract from the benchmark scores. So first up here is Cinebench R15. On the left you should see the A12-9800 and on the right you should see the A10-7890K. The interesting thing here is that it actually consistently scored just very slightly below the 7890K. I tried running the benchmark multiple times because you know you're always going to get a little bit of a different score every time you run it uh, just depending on the exact nature of what's going on in the background besides the benchmark and I could never quite get it up to where the 7890K was and I sort of blame that on the clock speed. They're both using bulldozer cores uh, but the a12-9800 only has a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz. Now it can turbo up to 4.2 gigahertz, but it doesn't stay at 4.2 all the time. It's back and forth depending on the thermal conditions around the APU. Whereas the 7890K has a base clock of 4.1 gigahertz and has a better cooler, so it can actually turbo up more often because it has more efficient cooling on top of it. So 
uh, the A10 7890K pulled out a little bit of a lead here because of its higher base clock speed and better cooler. Next up is Passmark Performance Test version 9. On the left you should see the A12 9800, on the right you should see the A10 7890K and there's a couple of interesting notes to make here. Uh, the first note is that the CPU mark is roughly the same. I mean there's a difference but it's not much. It's, it's a negligible difference. Uh, the 2D graphics, the 7890K actually performed very slightly better but again the difference is negligible. The 3D graphics mark did perform slightly better on the A12 9800. Uh, the biggest difference across these tests is actually the disk mark and they're both using solid state drives so the difference in score there can probably be chalked up to the fact that the system with the A12 has a 250 gigabyte drive whereas the system with the A10 is using a 120 gigabyte drive. An interesting thing here is actually the memory mark scores. The system on the left is using 2400 MHz DDR4. It is running at 2400 MHz. I have verified in the BIOS and with software within Windows that it is running at 2400 MHz. And that system also only has 512 MB dedicated to the graphics cores in the APU. Whereas the system with the 7890K is using lower speed 1866 megahertz DDR3 and has one gigabyte of that dedicated to the graphics cores. Both of them have a single eight gigabyte stick of Corsair Vengeance of the respective speed and type. And the score is actually very slightly higher on the system with DDR3. Why that is true is beyond me. They're both using MSI motherboards, Corsair RAM, AMD APUs, so, I mean, there is close to being identical systems across two different generations as you can get, and the, the memory performed the same on the past mark benchmark test, which is weird as can be to me. And next up for comparison benchmarks is actually Unigen Heaven. Both of these systems ran the benchmark at 1080p with the Ultra preset, and as you can see, the A12 9800 performed better, but just barely. It actually had an average frame rate of 4.6 with a minimum of 2.9 and a max of 10.1 whereas the 7890K had an average of 3.8 with a minimum of 2.6 and a max of 7.7. .7. The score of the A12 9800 was 115 and the score for the 7890K was 95. Better but just barely. Next up are some gaming benchmarks. These are going to be for the A12-9800 only. Now, first I ran the Bioshock Infinite benchmark. I ran it at 1080p. First up here are the results for the Ultra DirectX 11 depth of field setting for the benchmark, the highest it can go at 1080p. The total length of all of the scenes was 83.24 seconds. It had an average frame rate of 10.86 with a minimum of 3.43 and a maximum of 73.99. Now, if we turn the benchmark down to the medium preset, we get a runtime of 82.08 seconds with an average frame rate of 20.38, a minimum of 8.27, and a maximum of 31.28. So as you can see here, there is actually some footage of the gameplay uh, playing in the background. What I did was I set the game to the very lowest possible preset, but left the resolution at 1080p. I turned on MSI Afterburner so I could monitor, monitor the performance and then I used Radeon Relive on that same machine to record the video at 720p 30 frames per second at the same time that it was playing the game and it actually did fairly decent. It's not amazing, it wasn't 1080p 60 frames per second ultra settings but it goes to show that if you're willing to play with some settings you can actually play some reasonably modern titles. Next up is Doom 2016 using the Vulkan API. I chose Vulkan because it's an AMD APU and I wanted to offload as much as I could to the GPU cores so that the CPU cores would not be the bottleneck and Vulkan generally speaking runs very well on AMD hardware so when we first started the game here you can see in the intro scene that actually the game was sort of running at slow motion even though it was at the lowest possible preset at 1080p 100% resolution scale it was running in slow motion not just slow frame rate but actually slow motion like it was just not running at the speed it was supposed to and uh, so I played around with some settings I had to turn the gamma up because for some reason on this television screen when you turn down the resolution uh, the image gets darker but um, 
what I actually ended up settling on was actually 900p 50% uh, resolution scale. Now instead of running it at 900p 50%, you could probably run it at like 720p and a higher resolution scale, maybe even with some anti-aliasing, and get a decent 30 frames per second lock if that's something that's acceptable to you and you really want to play Doom and that's all the hardware that you've got. Now let's take a look at LEGO Lord of the Rings, something that is more akin to something my son would actually play on this system. Of course it runs fine. You set it to 1080p, look at the half a dozen or so graphics options it actually has, and turn them on or up, and the game runs fine. He's going to be playing the game with a controller anyway, uh, and it runs this game perfectly fine. It runs Minecraft perfectly fine. That's, that's not an issue. So uh, for the games that he's going to play, it runs great. So what's the verdict on this chip? It is basically the A10-7890K, slightly improved and repackaged for the AM4 socket. The 3D graphics are slightly better because they're using the faster DDR4 RAM than the 7890K uses, but it's basically on par with the 7890K. The bonus is that it's on the AM4 platform, so you've got an AM4 motherboard, which means support for PCI Express version 3, M.2 SSDs, uh, DDR4 RAM, and all of that stuff. It would make a good workstation APU, something where somebody's not going to be doing gaming or heavy duty video editing where a ton of horsepower would actually be useful. It would also be useful if you're if you're working on a gaming build but you don't have the money for that Ryzen 7 1800X yet, but you want something to put in that socket to get your build up and functional while you buy the better, more powerful parts that you actually want to use full time in the build. I used it for a build for my son because he's going to be using it to play, you know, Lego video games, watch Netflix, surf the internet, and play PBS Kids web games, maybe play some N64, PlayStation, or GameCube emulators, and things of that nature. So the need for a, a discrete graphics card was not really there, and this was the best APU that was available from AMD at the time that I uh, did the build. So. It should last him until AM4 is no longer the current platform at the very least. So if you already have a system with an A10-7890K and you're just wanting to upgrade to a better APU, wait for the Ryzen APUs to come out because performance-wise, it's it's on par. It's, it's almost identical. It, I, in my opinion, if you're just going to build a workstation and you've already got a 7890K, don't worry about upgrading to the A12 just because it's on a newer socket because the actual performance you're going to get out of the chip is going to be roughly the same. If you're doing a new build and you want to do an APU, whether that's for just light browsing, maybe emulating games for your kids, things of that nature, it's a decent choice. If you're wanting to do like an extremely low budget gaming build, uh, then I would just not even bother with the A12 at all. I would go with something like the Athlon X4950, which is the same four bulldozer cores, but it's just CPU cores, so the chip is only like 65 bucks or something like that. I would get something like that and say an RX 460 or 560, or just spend the extra 40 bucks and get the Ryzen 3, which will give you a lot more. CPU performance than either the A12 or the Athlon 950. So that is my take on the AMD A12 9800 and my son's build as a whole. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding something I said in this video, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. And as always, this is Marcus out. Y'all have a good one.